There are some watches out there that you can look at and instantly know what kind of watch they are. Like if I showed you an Orient Kama Soup, you'd instantly know it was a diver. If I showed you a Flieger, you'd know it's a pilot's watch. Or something like this is a dress watch. Yet there are some that are not quite as obvious. Watches that borrow a couple of different styles and seem to exist between the delineations. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today we're going to check out the brand new Zelos Comet. A sector style watch that's sort of a slim mechanical dress aviation hybrid thing. Which may not be quite as obvious when you first take a look at it, but I think that description starts to make a lot more sense once we start to get into the details. Although before we do that, one quick disclaimer, this watch was provided by Zelos, they're not asking for it back, hence that promotional tag at the beginning. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk a little bit about what this thing is. The name Comet comes from the first commercial jetliner, the DH-106 Comet. So right off the bat, you can tell that Zelos was going for an aviation style theme. Then in addition to that, the retro sci-fi handset used here is shared with the Zelos Starfighter. A very cool, yet very pricey aviation style chrono they did a bit ago. So that's the aviation side of things. But when you start to look at the specs, you start to see something that's more of a dress watch, and something that has more in common with the Nova they put out a few years ago. As it's a pretty slim mechanical that's only 8.7 millimeters thick without, and 9.7 millimeters with its box sapphire crystal. It's also on the smaller side of things, at 39 millimeters wide, with a shorter 45 millimeter lug to lug. As well as there's a nominal 50 meters of water resistance, and a fairly light weight of 60 grams on its strap. So once you start to take everything into account, I think you start to see the aviation dress hybridization of things. As this watch is sort of a cross between the Starfighter and the Nova, that for some reason decided to go off and get a Sector haircut. One of the Comet's biggest strengths is how it wears on the wrist, as it's a smaller platform that's lightweight and thin, which winds up just melting into your wrist. I'd say it wears true to that 39mm size. Yet, the visual presence on this one is much larger. In fact, after the first day wearing it, I had to go home and double check its size, because to me it seemed more like a 40, maybe even a little larger. But no, it's 39. The overall case design is primarily a minimalist circle that winds up framing the crystal and dial. Yet, the stubby angular lugs here are borrowed from the Starfighter, and they give it an interesting look. Kind of like a Seiko cocktail time that was mixed with a samurai. In terms of finishing, the name of the game is brushed here. Brushed crown, brushed case back, circular brushing on the bezel, and a horizontal brushing on the sidewalls. Overall, it's a pretty tooly case. Yet, there is still some flash here. With a slim beveled edge on the bottom of the bezel, and part of the very angular lugs having a mirror polish. The polished sections help to define the overall case shape, and occasionally catch your eye. But for the most part, I'd say this case is rather low-key and subtle, leaving your eyes to primarily focus on the dial underneath. The crown at the right is signed, but it isn't screwed down, which for some is the way to go with a mechanical. The crown is also just about the right size, where it doesn't distract from the design, yet it's also fairly easy to use. And with that mechanical movement, use it you will. Turning the watch over, you can see a nice wide exhibition case back, which gives you a glimpse of a rather uninspiring movement. In order to keep costs relatively reasonable, at least compared to the Nova, Zelos decided to use a standard SW215 movement, which is a good movement, but it's one that's not particularly interesting to look at. Now, one question that's bound to come up is how much clearance there is between the case and the spring bar, and that's because with the Nova, there was a particular issue here. That there wasn't much clearance, but worse, the edge of the case was a tad sharp. So after a little bit, it wound up taking bites out of various straps. Since I've only had this for about a week, I haven't extensively tested this. But with the straps I have used, I haven't noticed any problems. Either putting them on or seeing excessive wear. Although if I do, I'll pin a comment down below just to give an update. Anyway, let's move on to the most interesting aspect of the watch, the dial. For the comment, there are going to be six different colorways all of which are pretty interesting, and that does include a NASA branded version. Out of the bunch, I think the tuxedo is the best looking, yet I think this gold carbon is one of the more interesting. I'm really curious to see how this one's gonna do, because from this shot, it almost looks like military camo. And that's kind of an interesting choice for a dress watch. I mean, you're going Duck Dynasty chic here. 
Now, this particular version is the steel blue, and it's essentially a two-layer design, where the lower center layer has a matte silver white textured finish, which then seems to ripple outwards like a starburst. And then the upper outer layer is a light metallic blue ring sitting on top of everything and framing in that textured area. While the center dial is rather clean, the upper dial is anything but, where it has a circular brushed finish, a train track chapter ring, as well as the sector style indices rising out of it. There's a lot going on here in a rather small area. Yet, at the same time, it does seem to tie together, as the explosion of texture in the center seems to ripple outwards towards the metallic ring, helping to maintain some sense of cohesion. At the bottom of the dial, there's also a small cutout for the color match date wheel. Although, due to the metallic and reflective nature of this blue ring, it's not a perfect match. Depending on the lighting and the angle, the metallic ring seems to shift between lighter and darker shades of blue. It is close, but most of the time the date wheel is a lighter shade of blue. Then, topping everything off, you have what I'm referring to as a retro sci-fi handset. In the semi-skeletonized hands, it is the same handset Zelos used with the Starfighter. They're different, maybe a little odd, but I think they do work with the sector-style dial, as well as they have a perfect length. And one thing I appreciate is the different colored handsets for the different colorways, with this one having a matching blue. Now, sector-style dials do seem to be an increasing trend, or maybe rather a resurgence of an old trend, but either way you look at it, I think they're also polarizing. From previous comments I've gotten on both this and other sector style watches, people either seem to love them or hate them. Some would rather have something more conventional, and that right there is going to limit this design's appeal. Now, I tend to like sector dials, so there's a lot here I like. It's a visually interesting watch to look at, with the various textures, layers, and I can't stress how much I like the depth, especially with the nicely defined indices that rise out of that ring. I also love the symmetry of the design, going down the main line from the 12 to the logo to the text to the date, everything here is a mirror image on either side. Originally, I wasn't quite sold on the blue and silver color scheme, but that was also a concern I had with my old Seiko Ice Monster. And that, like this, is another watch I quickly warmed up to. But this, even more than that, is striking and eye-catching to look at. It's also very legible and easy to use. The white of the indices and the hands come through clearly against the light blue, while the darker blue color of the hands really pops against the silver texture in the middle. So there's a lot I like here, but where I think the watch starts to stumble is when I start to question if the watch is really doing what they set out for it to do. I mean, I get the hybridization part of it, and I'm good with what I see as the aviation-inspired elements, but I'm not quite sure about the dress side of things. It may depend on the colorway and may depend on what you're wearing, but this one I see as something more casual. I mean, maybe if you're wearing a light blue shirt or a powder blue tux, this could work, but otherwise I'm starting to see this as more of a sports watch, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Now, before we move on to the loom, I need to point out a couple of unfortunate defects. Some of you may have already caught them, but if you look really closely here, you'll see a couple of minor scratches on the blue section of the dial. It's always unfortunate when you run across something like this, but for context, I only saw these when I started looking at the macro shots. If I look at this right now, I couldn't see those scratches for the life of me. So it is easy to see how these could slip through QC, but at the same time, they're still there and that's still bad. For being on the Facebook group, I know that Zelos has pretty good customer service, so if there happens to be an issue, I'm betting they're going to take care of it so I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a reason not to buy it. But if you do jump on it, I'd still recommend you take a closer look just to make sure. Anyway, let's move on to the loom. And one of the great things about Zelos is that they always do a great job with loom, and even on non-divers. For this version of the Comet, they used a healthy amount of blue BGW-9. They used it on the indices, the hands, as well as a touch of loom on the chapter ring. And that chapter ring is a nice touch, even if it doesn't last very long. Now, the rest of the watch keeps going on, and in my comparison tests, it even kept up with a Seiko Diver, maybe even outlasting it by just a hair. And for a dressy, piloty sports watch, that's pretty good. For the movement, Zelos went with a Salita SW215, which I believe is basically a hand-winding version of the SW200. And if that's the case, it should be a good, reliable movement. 
Personally, I prefer automatics just for the ease of use, but there's something to be said about a nice thin mechanical on your wrist. It also looks like every colorway is going to come with the same black Horween leather strap. And I think this is a strap they've used on some of their other watches. For the most part, it's a great leather strap, I mean, it's hard to go wrong with Horween. But it didn't last too long on the watch for me, just because I tend to find black leather rather boring. It's basically the default or generic choice for a watch. And this is something I've talked about before. There's nothing particularly wrong with it, it's just kind of my thing with black leather. We already talked about the clearance between the spring bar and the case before, but one additional thing to note is that if you're really intent on using NATOs or single passes, you may have a problem here. And if that's something you want to do, make sure you get some bent or curved spring bars. Now, if the watch isn't already available, it will be shortly. As of recording this, there are a couple of days left on the countdown clock. But once it is available, it's going to be sold with a discounted launch price of $529 for the normal dials and $569 for the specialty. And remember, that's launch pricing. As typical as Zelos, the price is going to go up after about a month. Normally, I like to offer some sort of value evaluation, like looking at the watch analytically and comparing it to other watches out there. But that only tends to work when you have similar watches to compare it to. And here, due to the hybridization, the mechanical movement, it's kind of hard to find other watches to find a true apples to apples comparison. However, if you're interested in this, you're most likely going to be interested in sector style dials. So I thought I should at least show you some alternative sectors to look into, like the Longines Heritage Classic. I personally love this one, but it is a bit pricey. There's also the Safari, which I think was about 500 bucks, but I'm not sure if or when they're ever going to get more of these. Vario also made a sector version of their Empire for around 350, but that one's also sold out, and I'm not sure if they're going to get any more. Interestingly, Axios, one of Zelos' sister brands, also has one coming, or supposedly coming. I reviewed this one a few months ago, but it's been kind of radio silence from them ever since. And lastly, you could always look at something like a Seiko Mojito. Bottom line, I like it, and I think there are other people out there who will like it as well. The Comet is a great looking creative watch that wears well and is still very easy to read. Once I warmed up to this blue and silver color scheme, I can't help but want to look at it. But at the same time, there are a couple things going against this one as well. For one, not everyone likes sector dials, and two, not everyone likes a hybrid. For some, they'd rather have a dedicated pilot's watch or a dedicated dress watch, rather than one watch that doesn't do either quite as well. Now, personally, I don't dress up that much. So for me, anything that looks kind of dressy, but that I can still wear with jeans and a t-shirt is a plus, which is why I tend to like watches like the Comet or something like my Champagne Khaki King, as well as my Seiko Alpinist. They're watches that can pull double duty, so to speak. Now, for the most part with the Comet, what you're seeing here is what you're gonna get. So if you like the design, you like the watch on the variety of straps I've shown, I think you're gonna like it in person. The only real question is if you think it's worth the price to have another Zelos, or if you think it's worth it to set an alarm and fight other fans for it. Because for this one, I think you're gonna have to. Anyway, that's my take on the Zelos Comet. As always, let me know yours down below, or if you can think of any other hybrid type watches that you think does it better. And as always, you guys know what to do down below. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. See you next time.